According to my favorite human history book, said that my people will perish because of lack of knowledge. This book is the Holy Bible. And therefore, I will agree to the motion that says being uneducated speeds up the rate of drug abuse. My name is Nancy Muchuku, representing Mwanambeyu Girls, proposing the motion that says lack of educational awareness is the greatest catalyst to drug abuse in the coastal region. Before I could even start saying my point, I'd like you to know the important word used in the motion. First, what is lack? Lack is the state of knowing nothing. A catalyst is a device that speeds up the rate of significance change. Education, state of acquiring knowledge and skills. Awareness, state of having knowledge and understanding about something that happens or exists. Drug abuse is the use of drugs for wrong purpose. Now, according to my understanding, educated people do not take drugs as compared to uneducated people. Although not all educated people take no drugs, but about 10%, roughly, out of 100 people, I mean educated people, take drugs as compared to uneducated people. Kat Cabin quoted that drugs are a waste of time. They destroy your memory, your self-emotion, and everything that goes along with your esteem. Drugs waste your time. Let's take for example, you as a student, you don't have that time to take drugs. For example, after, when you are given time to go to your after, teachers gives you assignment. You have um, you have you have duties to help your parents. You have to take notes or something else to so that you can increase your academic performance. Thus, I propose that. Lack of educational awareness is the greatest catalyst to drug abuse. Thank you.
Presenter, my name is Njeri Emily from Kole Girls High School. I stand before you today to strongly oppose the motion that says lack of educational awareness is the greatest catalyst to drug abuse in the coastal region. What is educational awareness? It is the act of being educated and understanding. While drug abuse is the using of drugs for the wrong purpose. All in all what I'm trying to say is missing knowledge is not the biggest factor that speeds up the misuse of drugs in the coastal region. We got people out here, we got people who are highly educated, people who hold degrees, but still they initiate the use of drugs. We got the celebs who are who are out here. They still they still use the drugs and they are so addicted to them. So when you try to tell us that lack of education awareness it will lead to the it will lead to the drug abuse. That's not true. We got people who are out here like they have, they are learned enough. They have gone to school and they still use drugs. And the same, we have our political leaders out here who are also learned by the matter of fact. But still, they fight for the legalization of drugs that are not legalized. And us as youths in the coast region, us as the people in the coast region, people will use the drugs legally knowing that they are not, like it's okay for you to use it. And after all, drug abuse isn't healthy, isn't healthy in our lives. Secondly, we have the social medias. In the social medias, drugs are like people post how people are like people post the users of drugs. Like people are out here doing everything, uh, showing how drugs is, but still they, they won't see what how people like out here take it. People will now take an advantage to use the drugs. So what I'm trying to say is, and I'm so sure that lack of educational awareness is not only the greatest catalyst but you still have other reasons out here why people use drug abuse in the coastal region i rest my case <laughs>
lack of education. Thank you. If I speak with human eloquence and, and angelic ecstasy, but I'm out to kill a great mind, I'm nothing but the creaking sound of a rusty gate. I'm Doris Majala, strongly opposing the motion that states lack of educational awareness is the greatest catalyst to drug abuse in the coastal region. Do you think lack of educational awareness is the only greatest catalyst to drug, to drug abuse in the coastal region? The answer is no. Stress. How does it affect people in the, in the engagement of drug abuse? For instance, after the relocation of the port, people educated and educated who are employed, of, who are employed at the coastal port became unemployed, making them use drugs to escape from the reality concerning the true economic situation in the coastal region. History of trauma. What is history of trauma? History of trauma, this is a great distress. This is an emotional wound which will last for so long. For instance, for instance, adolescent girls who are, who are engaged in sexual abuse or physical abuse in their lifetime tend to use drugs so that they can, so that they can reduce their pain and try to forget all the past that, that it has happened or all the past that has happened to them. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem, this is where someone is not accepting and tolerating any negative process to them. For example, people from coastal region, they do not accept themselves emotionally, physically, and mentally, forcing them to use drugs. For example, people not, accept, people not accepting that they are financially poor, although having been educated. According to, Dr. According to Dr. Harding B. Jones, he concluded, teenagers get a lot of money from their parents. Most of, them, most, of, most of the families have one or two children, and parents have no time to spend with their children. This makes, the, this makes children to, to, use the drug, to, use, to use the money to, this makes the children to spend their money in the misuse of, drug, in the misuse of drugs. For, exam, for example, some parents in the coastal region spend much of their time in their businesses, forgetting, leaving their children in the masses of houses. This, this is the time that teenagers get opportunity to go ahead, use drugs. According to the statistics, Lamu and Malindi are the most affected areas in the coastal region. I rest my case. I would love to answer your question, my Honorable. You said that why is she educated as a doctor and she, till, and she still abuses drugs? She might be educated, but she lacks the awareness about drug abuse and its effects. So I'd love to give you a study that was carried out in Lamu County. Established that the highest number of drug abusers it was about 20, roughly 25 to 30 percent of the population, and so factors um, according to Nakada 2015, majority of which were drug abusers, mostly in Faza Award in Lamu County. So this means the lower the level of educational awareness, the higher the level of drug and substance abuse. I hope that I've answered your question well. And also, I also think that according to, let's go back to the society. We can talk about, we, can, we, we have all noticed and we all know the word teja. What comes into your mind when you come across the word teja? Is, 
is a Tejan an educated person or not an educated person? Literally, I may say that a Teja is not an educated person. So, I cannot, I cannot say that educated people are the same as those Tejas, or we can call them thugs. So they're not the same. I cannot make them, put them in the same way. So they're different, two different things. So I think, I did not say that drugs are, those people who lack awareness are they uneducated. You might be educated and you can still lack the awareness about drug abuse. Or maybe you are ignoring about the effects of drug abuse. Thank you. Opposers, proposers, and house at large, I'm Cindy Kacher from Kuala Girls, ready to strongly oppose, sorry, 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 answering a question from one of the audience. Um, Wajakoya is not legalizing the bank for consumption. He is legalizing the bank um, for, to raise the economy of Kenya. By this, what do I mean? When trees of banks are, plant, are planted everywhere, Kenya will like, okay, it will be rich, and in this way maybe they can um, sell it to other countries. They'll not use the drugs because actually it will be cheap for them. So it will be like in their own country, it will be like something normal, but from the other countries it will be hard to get. So they'll export to the other countries, and this is where the economy of Kenya is raised. Um, I'm opposing this motion. Why am I even opposing it? The question is, if lack of educational awareness is not a catalyst to drug abuse, what does it catalyze? We have, like, over-dependence. We learn to stop relying on other people. What I mean is, when... The women that are here first, the, the, the beautiful ladies that are here, you need to learn to get educated. When you get married to your, when your husband marries you, you'll not like be the, the parasite, like depending on him to each and everything. You'll also want to show him that you're much, you can also like cater for the household needs, right? Um, for the men that are here for the boys for the young boys you'll also have to educate yourselves to to have the chance to cater for your for your future um, for your future thank you so much Mwanambeu girls versus Kwale girls. The motion reads, lack of educational awareness is the greatest catalyst to drug abuse in the coastal region. So first things first, Mwanambeu girls, the first speaker, that's the first proposer. Um, you defined the terms well. That was a good start. I had two major problems um, with you. The first one is, you gave us statistics and some research. I think you said something like 10 out of 100 um, people who are educated and whatnot. What I'd want to um, continue specifying is anytime you give us a statistic, please mention the source you got the information from. So if you're telling us 10 out of 100, this and this and this, this was from a research done in the United States or a research from the county government or from the newspaper, or from whichever source. So every other time, and this goes even to the other team, anytime you give us any source of research, statistic, or a fact, kindly mention the source where you got the information from to validate um, your account. 
we had an issue with time management. I think it's cutting across the board and even from the other debates. And that's one thing we need to realize. Anytime you're going to debate, go directly into it. Don't waste too much time um, um, trying to set the, the, the tempo for the debate and forget you have points to give and you have points to exhaust, continue giving. So time management was an issue. Um, again, the second speaker from Manambeu Girls, good statistics were given. This time round, they came with sources, which is one thing I appreciate. Um, again, um, there was good um, mastery of content, uh, the passion and conviction, we could see it. A little bit about coherency, but overall, it was a good job done. Um, the third speaker, good response to the question. I think one thing we always want to say about the debaters is you should be in a position to think on sport. So when you're asked a question and you come up with a good response on it, it shows that you're doing a good job when it comes to thinking on sport. Research had statistics. I think you gave um, a localized uh, research that was done with one of the coastal counties. That was good. It's also good um, that um, you, you gave an argument that demarcated the difference between being educated and educational awareness. I think that was one part of the debate that really needed to come out that a lot of times you can't be educated but the awareness part of it is different um, overall that was a good job done i'll go to um quality girls um, the first speaker good definition of terms um statistics had sources that was good you gave good points that was concerning social media and other elements that could be catalysts to um uh, drug abuse in the coast region which is good. The problem I had with you is you didn't use all your time. All the debaters, kindly, kindly, until you hear the bell, please continue giving us your points. So at no point should we find, even if it's just a few seconds, always exhaust your entire time anytime you're debating. And even the um, other schools that have not come on stage, make sure, utilize all your time. The bell is not there to chase you. The bell is just there to tell you that um, your time is up, so make sure you utilize all your time. The second speaker from Quale Girls, um, you gave good examples. However, there were no sources and statistics. Also, expound anytime you're, you're giving us statistics or the numbers. If you're telling us um, this percentage of people, this number of people, what does it mean to the um, argument of the debate? When you're telling us this percentage of people do drugs, this percentage um, don't do drugs, what does that mean? Don't just leave it at that. Continue expounding it. I had a small problem with you. There was a lot of reference from um, the material you had. So every other time um, you are always going to, to read, it looked like you are reading more than um, you are you're giving us your point. So always ensure you just have a sh short note for reference. Once you refer to your point, continue giving us or continue debating. We want to hear you speak more other than um, seeing you always referring. Um, the third speaker uh, from Quali Girls, again, good response to um, the, the question. I think um, it reminded me of um, the debates that were happening, the deputy presidential debates, when we talked about Wajakoya and, and, and the bang issue and, and whatnot. So that was a good response when it comes to um, medicinal versus recreational use. And again, that's one thing I want to see from this debate because anytime we're talking drugs, it's now an issue that's coming up. What are we talking about? Are we talking about the recreational bit of drugs or the medicinal? It's a big debate in our country and I hope to see that. However, the third speaker from Quali Girls, you did not utilize your time well. After you answered your question, you just left. I think every debater has three minutes. So until all the three minutes are done, continue utilizing. Again, you answered the questions you didn't give um, more points, more build-up points for your team, and that might have cost you. And finally, always finish all your submissions. Generally, this is what I'll say about the debate. Um, what One thing I needed to hear from you people, which I might not have heard very well, what is it about educational awareness that makes us either use drugs or refrain from drugs? What is it about educational awareness? We wanted to know, does it tell us more about the effects? Does it tell us more about the, um, the bad uses? What is it that we are sure, once we have educational awareness, 
definitely our drug use is going to go down. I needed to hear more about, is it biological? Is it from chemistry? Is it, what is it about educational awareness that will help us to uh, tackle this issue? And from the opposing side, I needed to hear more of, if not educational awareness, what are these other things that are catalysts? Yeah, we have um, you know people in government who maybe are the ones selling these drugs. We have um, what are these other loopholes that are making drug abuse an issue? So those are some of the things I didn't hear about for, um, from the debate, and maybe we can improve on that. But generally, that was a good job. I commend the debaters and all the best. Thank you. I feel like I could tell that you guys were nervous. And I just wanted to say that it's okay to be nervous. Sometimes you feel a bit anxious and then you become anxious that you're anxious and then you become anxious that you're anxious. That You know, it goes on and on and on and on. So we, we don't fault anyone for being nervous. Everyone gets nervous and anxious when they're standing before a group of people and they're trying to talk. However, I can say that your biggest um, challenge is how you're going to overcome that nervousness. Yes? Um, even if you falter in your speech, even if you bite some, a couple of words, a couple of letters in a sentence, it's okay. But sometimes when that happens, we panic, yeah? So don't panic. Don't panic. What you have to say is very important. We are here to listen to you. I'm trying um, to avoid repeating everything that uh, my fellow judge has said, so I'm just going to look at the other things. Huh? We talked about bringing statistics. We want to see those statistics. I'm glad that I had a couple of um, numbers here and there. However, please make sure that the argument you're using actually backs up what you want to bring across. Um, at some point, there were some statistics that I was given that I felt did not really help your argument. However, another proposal, I mean, another member came in and backtracked a little bit on that so I could understand it better. So when you're using your statistics, are these statistics helping your argument or not? Another thing when you're doing your research for these debates is, for every point you have, you have to be aware that the other team can dismantle it. And you also have to try and think, so what will the other team think about their motion and what they're trying to put across? So always, always look at a topic and argue from both sides before you come up with your main arguments. We also, I also didn't see um, a clear flaw. At some point, I didn't know whether one point was over and we were next to the next point or we were still discussing the same point. So that wasn't very clear to me. Please work on that. But all in all, very good job. I'm excited to see what else the other guys come, come up with. So thank you so much for um, uh, those arguments that you have presented during the debate. And I'll also bring to your attention some things that I have taken note of. I have seen improvement in keeping time generally, even though we wouldn't say we are exactly where we want to be. However, there is that improvement uh, for this particular uh, debate. Uh, something else is uh, is there is a great understanding of current issues. For example, when a question came from the audience um, concerning one of the drugs and a candidate, a presidential candidate who wants to uh, use that as a major point in their manifesto, uh, you are able to uh, quickly respond to that. However, uh, you did not really bring out um, exactly what the presidential candidate uh, provides as reasons. Uh, so possibly I would encourage that we uh, further our research. The, the response was very nice. However, I encourage that we further our research on current issues. And it's commendable that we understand what's going on and that we can relate it to the debate today. Something else is um, um, will understanding, will awareness of negative effects prevent people from using drugs? Uh, someone raised the question that 
the people who are most educated are the ones who are using drugs. So if they are told about the negative effects of uh, drugs, will that prevent them from um, using the drugs? So when confronting such an issue, you can uh, look at other factors that come into play besides uh, the information. Does that mean they are using it for the other benefits that come with that? Uh, my fellow judge spoke about uh, recreational use and medicinal use. So we can explore all those avenues that um, uh, come under that topic uh, so that we can uh, be able to argue uh, with more with more details. Something else I noticed is uh, uh, Cindy, who was the third opposer from Kuala Girls. Uh, thank you so much for the response to the question. Uh, I would encourage you that you can do it. All you have to do is uh, give us your points. We're here for you. So um, you got this. With that, I thank you so much.